Hi everybody, this is Brian Koo with another ROK video. A nice change to the game recently is the introduction of the Fog of War Ark of Osiris map, which in my opinion is a genuine improvement over the old Ark of Osiris map that we've been playing for the last four and a half years. The difference with the Fog of War map is that you can only see in an area around each of your team's marches and in a circular visual range around any building that you control. This means that large parts of the map are non-viewable to you and that a lot of the enemy's troop movements are also outside of your range of vision. You can see any rallies come into your buildings but you cannot see the open field machinations of your enemy. This has, so far in my experience, turned out to be a really fun way to play this map. Because the old version of Ark of Osiris has gotten a little bit stale due to the fact that both teams have perfect information about what their opponent is doing. That means that you can easily counter or react to what the enemy is doing and it means that a very standard strategy has evolved, particularly at the highest levels. When you watch the final rounds of the Osiris League in the past, both teams performed very similar strategies on the sides, and victory usually came down to simply who fought better in the middle. With this new version of Ark of Osiris, there are a number of significant changes along with the reduction of your visual range. There are a lot of new skills on the map, the most important of which is the Hidden Sentry skill, which is like a ward in games like League of Legends or Dota 2. Unlike those games, the wards in Rise of Kingdoms or in Ark of Osiris, they allow you to both see in a visual range around the ward, and you can also locate enemy wards that are within that range, and you can, of course, destroy those wards. This adds a new layer to this chess match that goes on between shot callers on both teams, because those wards provide very important information on key parts of the map and make fighting on those parts of the map much easier due to the fact that you can actually see the enemy. There are also skills like the one we're looking at right now called Dust Up, where you can decrease the visual range of the enemy. Our opponents had put Dust Up on us, and so now the uh, illuminated area around each march is actually smaller than when Dust Up is not on. And there's also another skill called Total Vision, in which you can see all of the enemy marches and see the visual range around those enemy marches. Dust Up costs two points, Total Vision costs four points. Both of them give you a bit of a fighting buff alongside the vision advantages. And they're pretty well balanced with Mystical Formation and War Drums, which now cost three points in this new Ark of Osiris rather than two points in the old version. So all in all, this has created a more dynamic battlefield where not only do you have a lot of interesting skills that we didn't have before, but you also have incomplete information about what your opponent is doing and therefore what you should be doing. And this just adds more thinking and creativity to the way your team is playing and the calls that get made in, when leading your team. You know, I remember a few months ago we were talking about Ark of Osiris while we were playing it, and one of my teammates commented that an AI team and an AI leader would be able to beat a human team. And I really couldn't argue with him about on that point because the truth is when you have perfect information, it becomes a very a straightforward analytical process about what the right thing to do is. And it's really about having a game plan, going through that game plan, and just operating 
efficiently. This new game mode really adds a lot more imagination to the play calling because you have to anticipate what the opponent might do and then you have to adjust your own game plan based on those predictions. It's very much a chess game and you see right here that because we already had vision middle when the enemy placed their sentry war down we were able to kill it because we had control of the field and we saw it right away. Another really cool skill in this new Ark of Osiris format is called Master Strategy and it costs six points to use it. What you do is you place down a teleport circle and then you place a destination for that circle. 20 seconds after you cast the skill, all marches that are in the teleport circle will get warped to the final destination. In this case, we used Master Strategy Mid in order to surprise and outnumber our enemy and pick up an easy win of this particular arc battle. There are actually a lot of uses for this skill. You can also use it to warp to an enemy's obelisk, swarm the obelisk, and warp in your own cities. Or you could ambush an arc carrier that is unprotected as they bring the arc to a building. You could warp in 20 people, kill the arc carrier, swarm down the building, and return the arc yourself. That was hilarious. Fucker is just like dragging his marches in and out of this bar, but he, he, he ended up with only missing one and getting the rest of his marches teleported, so it worked. I was, I was just like, looked at where my marches were and they were just like behind enemy lines. <laughs> oh, that is great. That is so funny. That is such a funny skill. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So a bunch of cool new things are going to happen in this new Ark of Osiris, which makes it all that much more of a bummer that Lilith recently announced that there will be no spectating of Osiris League until the championship quarterfinals or so, when there are only eight or maybe 16 teams left in the league. And at that point, there will be some spectating via Lilith's official YouTube channel. But no other content creators will be able to stream earlier Osiris League matches, and no one will be able to spectate via the in-game client. Now, I understand why Lilith has to do this. It's because stream sniping would be just way too valuable in a non-delayed stream, or just through any non-delayed spectator. You could spectate a match, see where the enemy placed their wards, and then you could tell the team where they should put their counter ward so that they can destroy the enemy stuff. So that's just a way, way too big of an advantage. And so it is true that there has to be a major delay on all of these matches. The wards last 12 minutes. And so you do need at least a 12 minute delay on Osiris League matches. And unfortunately, it seems like Lilith was just not able to code that into the ROK game itself in time for this league. And so we're not going to be able to watch matches. I'm sure we'll still be able to bet on the matches, but then we will not be able to spectate the games that we bet on. And that's just a real uh, disappointing development because Osiris League has been a great community event ever since it started. You know, people bet on certain teams and then they just get that much more excited to watch the match and root for particular teams. And it generates a lot of conversation in Alliance chat. It generates conversation in various Discord groups. And it's a great uh, opportunity for small time content creators like myself to cast the matches and then build our audience via that content. 
So hopefully in future Osiris League seasons, there will be a built-in delay for all matches and we'll be able, be able to get back to the very fun community event that Osiris League used to be. And we'll get to do it on this new Fog of War map that is actually cooler, more fun, more challenging than the old one. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got some useful information about the new Ark of Osiris from it. Throw a like on the video if it did help you out or if you simply were entertained. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you all on the flip side.